Hello, everyone. We're about to go in depth with president of Collaborative Apps and Platforms, Jeff Teeper. On the big Microsoft 365 announcements heard earlier from Microsoft Teams, Viva, Syntex, and more. We'll get Jeff's perspective on the evolution of this tech stack over his 30 year Microsoft career, plus how you can get the most from this powerful collection of capabilities. Live from Seattle, this is Microsoft Ignite into focus. Welcome everyone, I am Karawana Gatimu. Today we're going deep into Microsoft 365 to explore the latest in productivity, communication, and collaboration for the next gen workplace. And we have the best person here to take us on this deep dive. He's someone I personally admired as I've watched all the innovation he's led over time and who I consider myself truly lucky to learn from in my day job in Microsoft Teams. Please join me in welcoming Microsoft President of Collaborative Apps and Platforms, Jeff Teeper. Yes. <laughs> We're here, here. I know. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. In person. <laughs> So fantastic. I am super excited to be here. As am I. See, I've saved all of my excited's for this session. <laughs> I haven't said the word too many times. You know, um, Jeff is going to take your questions later in the show, so be sure to submit them in the online chat. So, you know, um, it's a busy moment of news yes. and announcements. That's kind of an understatement. Uh, we've made so many, but when you talk to customers, what is really top of mind for them? Yeah, the things, the themes that customers raise are, are themes they've had for a while, but really the pandemic amplified them. The need to have their employees work well together from around the world um, and the need to have those employees more engaged, supporting each other's learning, growing. Learning is very top of mind for the new generation entering the workforce. And then, as we're saying in the theme of the event here, customers all want to do more with less. They want the infrastructure to just work at lower cost and get a steady stream of innovation. And so that, that feedback from customers, which you know, as you know, we summarize that in our work trends index, mm -hmm really motivated the work we're doing in Teams and Viva and Syntex and more that we announced this week. Absolutely, and you know, Microsoft is a very comprehensive offering. There's yes. so much included there. Yeah. What I loved about what you said is it's really taking a people first approach to how we leverage that technology, making sure everybody's engaged and, and getting more from the suite as a whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, you know, if I think back that we're really trying to take a lot of flexibility that organizations need to collaborate in new ways and make it really simple. You yeah. know, as you know, we yeah. obsess about this in teams all the time that people want, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, new types of meetings, right. you know, new types of business applications. You may have seen Satya share the American Airlines Connect Me app. And yet we've got to also make all that power simpler. And so, right. you know, that's really the two themes we, we've got in our product development is how we can bring new value to market, but have it be digestible both by end users and, and IT. And you have a unique perspective, right? You've been at Microsoft for 30 years, which <laughs> is amazing. I know, sorry, I hate to tell that to everybody in the world. I started when I was seven. <laughs> you did. You and I both, right? <laughs> we were both like seven and eight. Um, at any rate, but I really want to understand your technical perspective about the investments we're making and the change over time. Like, how do you see this all yeah. coming to fruition? Yeah, there were sort of three errors. First is when I first started off in office, we were taking office from personal productivity to group productivity with SharePoint Exchange, et cetera. Uh, and then in 2008, we announced that we would host those services as uh, then Microsoft Online, later became Office 365. And there was a period of a few years where the, both the market needed to evolve and the technology needed to evolve. And now, you know, if I look at where we are with Microsoft 365 and Azure, uh, I couldn't be more grateful for all the feedback of the customers and partners that have been with us on the journey, but also really super proud of the engineering team. I mean, the scale at which we're operating 
just I would never have guessed, you know, and we'll, you know, we'll talk about this when we get to syntax, uh, 1.6 billion new documents in Microsoft 365 every day. So that sort of brings us today where after that long journey we were on, we're now able to do what you all want us to do, which is innovate faster than ever. And I've been to many Ignites and conferences, <laughs> and I would say our delivery is pretty good here. I'm very proud of what we're bringing to market for customers. Ultimately, you'll all judge, but um, I think that cloud journey is letting us deliver more at lower cost, faster to customers. Absolutely, and it is such a diverse and inclusive uh, team of engineers, and it, and it takes all of us and, and our other partners across yeah. the company you know, to actually get this to customers. But your feedback matters, right? I think what I hope you heard him just say is, yeah, we're listening to you as we make these new scenarios. Yeah, every day, as you know, I mean, you're, you're, you lead the team where we get together and talk about what do people love, what do people have mixed feelings about, what do people not like that they need us to do. If we're doing new things, like one of the things we're just doing uh, is we introduce some new chat and channel experiences. You know, we really want to obsess about people's feedback on that. Is this a step forward or not? And so right. I, you know. Right, it's super important. Thank you for leading that and leading with uh, extreme truth telling as we have those discussions. Yes, it is important. With uh, active listening, I always tell <laughs> folks, is what I use more than anything. Um, but you know, you're talking about, over this 30 years, you're talking about the birth of the cloud, the foundation of everything we know, how it's evolved now. So let's now pivot to today, right? Yeah. Let's, let's talk about the big news and announcements at Microsoft Ignite. Um, what are your top highlights? Yeah, certainly uh, Satya and Jared Spitaro talked about a set of things in base Microsoft 365, the new Microsoft 365 app, Loop, Designer, and so forth. I think the things in my area I'm really excited about is first, uh, the things we're doing around Viva. Yes. Uh, you know, if you look at um, the Viva connections and how that integrates with Teams and builds on SharePoint and, uh, and, uh, and Yammer, Viva Engage, and really brings into a much more out-of-box place all the tools and information people need to do their job in a way that's much simpler to customize than we did in the past. Yeah. And so, you know, a whole set of new capabilities we announced in Viva, Viva Connections this week. Uh, but we also introduced a new member of the family I'm very excited about, uh, Viva Amplify. This is something I've wanted to do for years, because, you know, we, we, you set up SharePoint sites, you sent emails in the company, but you didn't actually have this sort of digital marketing structure right. that people had to communicate with their customers and partners. And I, why not? Why can't you know, we have the same kind of sort of efficiency and rigor and analysis on that? And so Viva Amplify lets you communicate across email and teams and engage and um, <laughs> That makes uh, me so happy. <laughs> and target campaigns and measure the effectiveness of them. Uh, and it's not just for central corp comms, it's, you know, you may have a business initiative, you may be doing change management, right. you want to educate employees, you may, it's the giving campaign at Microsoft, you may want to educate people in the progress in the giving campaign, so I'm very excited about Viva Amplify uh, that comes out next year. And, it, and it's fantastic because so many of us, myself included, have struggled with how to do those communications yeah. inside our own company so that people can be aligned and be engaged and they know they're important and they have that information. Yeah. So We've I'm very- the channels with you know, Teams, yes. SharePoint, and so forth, but we haven't given them the system to manage it and right. structure it and measure it yet. Right, right, so I'm excited about that. Yeah. And then, of course, Teams, Microsoft yeah. Teams Premium. Wow. Uh, a lot of things in base teams, as you know, teams, uh, we've added about 450 new features in the last year. Uh, you know, one of my favorite things that first day of the month is to go read the team's blog in our community forum about everything we did. Uh, you know, new meeting experiences, new meeting room experiences, new chat and channel experiences. But probably the big news of this week is Teams Premium. Yes. Uh, where we have a new set of value that we're delivering to customers that helps for those more high value and tailored meeting experiences, uh, whether they're inside or outside their, your organization. It helps you customize them and brand them. It helps you secure them. It helps you extend to customers with things like webinars and virtual visits. Uh, there's new security capabilities. There's a whole host of new AI capabilities for you know, things like meeting summarization. You know, I'm like, 
you know, one thing I, if I could do one thing for the world is not have everybody feel like they need to go to every meeting they're invited to and instead skip some of them. Yes, yes, okay, please, give, let's give it up for that. Let's give it up for that right here live. Uh, as much as we know we all try to get a note taker in the meeting, sometimes it doesn't happen. And AI is happy to take those notes and summarize the meetings for us. So there's, you know, whether it's these different types of meetings or bringing AI to meetings, I'm really excited. Uh, Nicole Herskowitz in her session covered this and much more um, that's coming out with Teams Premium. I think that that's fantastic. And yeah. you know, it's a rich set of capabilities and, and we're happy to again, take the feedback from customers to help us you know, create that. Yeah. But there's, there's another thing, there's another thing yeah, I know we want to talk about, right? The new kid on the block. Yeah. Let's talk about Microsoft Syntax. Yeah, so uh, as maybe some of you know, I've worked in content management for a little bit of my career <laughs> and you know, the idea of SharePoint bringing together collaboration content management portals in a, in a base product that does files and lists and videos and so forth. Uh, and we're really grateful for the community that built around it and the momentum. Uh, you know, I think we shared the 1.6 billion new documents every day that are added to SharePoint powered experiences in Microsoft 365. And those experiences are growing. We uh, did the GA of the new Microsoft Stream on SharePoint that lets you bring rich video to your company with all the collaboration and compliance capabilities of SharePoint. Uh, but we have an even bigger goal, which is to help people really harness all the content in their organization, collaborative, transactional, it could be paper-based. Uh, and it builds on SharePoint but it really extends much beyond SharePoint. And so we introduced Microsoft Syntax that has 11 new capabilities. Uh, it is, you know, and we'll go through them uh, briefly, uh, but it builds on what you already have. It builds on Microsoft 365. It leverages a lot of Microsoft AI capabilities as opposed to you having to write the code on top of the AI, we did it for you. Uh, Power Platform for automating those document processes, Microsoft Purview because you want your content classifications and processes to connect to information protection. Uh, so pretty comprehensive one Microsoft set of investments. And uh, you know, I won't go through all 11 of them, but let's talk about some of them. First, yeah. document translation. Uh, Love you know, that. Right click in a library in SharePoint and translate all the files to a different language. Uh, very critical, you know, I think when we shipped the first version of SharePoint, the first question I get when I left the United States was about multilingual support. Yeah. And so for years, people would manually translate these documents, and now we can have AI just do it for you automatically, right in line. Uh, so that's a big capability. Uh, but it's just a subset of the more advanced document processing we have, where let's take, um, you have a whole bunch of documents. You want to understand, are they contracts? Are they invoices? Are they accounts payables? Uh, and so we have models and ability for you to build models on those. And then extract uh, metadata on those for a whole bunch of reasons. Business process, right. searching, uh, compliance and so forth. So if you want to extract from your contracts, you know, who the customer is, what are the terms, what's the amounts, you know, what's the approval chain, we can use AI to do that, and so a big set of document understanding capabilities. And then a whole set of other, you know, adjunct services to content management, archiving, backup, restore, and so forth. But one of the biggest ones is digital signatures. Oh, uh, people yes. told us they wanted to put more structure around ad hoc business processes to make them more uh, accountable, trackable, and so forth. And one of our key principles for everything we're doing here is embracing our ecosystem. Right. So we're building a more simple out-of-box experience for digital signatures, but partners like Adobe, Adobe Acrobat, um, Sign, and DocuSign, and many others will plug in, in addition to the out-of-the-box experience. So we have our out-of-the-box UI, right. but under the covers, you can, you can plug uh, that in. So I just, you know, we, we have, if I can put in a plug, in, in about 16 minutes, yes. 11 o'clock uh, Pacific uh, time, uh, we have our Syntax session for me, and, and there's a lot, a lot to learn there. And I'm, I'm super proud of the team, but mostly I'm super grateful for everybody who's been on the journey with us and given us the feedback to build this product. 
Absolutely, and you know, one of the things that I want everybody in this room and online to understand is these new capabilities are opportunity for those of us who have careers in this space. Yes. Everything that you just talked about, yeah. I'm mentally taking notes about having to go learn to figure out how to go do it and how to explain it to other people and implement it in an organization. Like this is career transformation type of capabilities that we're releasing. And yeah. I, I'm always really happy about that because, of course, that's how I got here, um, yeah. you know, uh, through the community and through learning that and a lot of self-study and the innovation drives so much for, for us out in the field. It's, it's really important. So yeah. I'm so excited that, that about that all of the, that. Yeah, that's, uh, we'll talk about community in a second, but yeah. the ability to learn and be a hero and grow your career, you know, that Syntex is, I think, going to create a number of great opportunities, not just for companies to save money, but for people to build their careers around and Absolutely. take a lot of pride in that. And you know, also, there's a lot of diversity in what we're doing, and I do want to go back and also talk about one other piece, which yes. is mesh, Yeah. right? Because mesh in the metaverse, it's a very hot topic. There's lots happening around yeah. that. Um, and of course, that's also in your space, in your division's area of responsibility. Yeah, well stepping back, there's a lot of technology that's come out and you know, the next few years are going to be pretty mind-blowing. You know, I know AR, VR has been around for a while, but we're going to hit an inflection point on, on the devices, the graphics, the AI that powers all these things. Uh, and that's cool, but the thing that really matters is creating engaging experiences where people get more connected. Because I think we all saw in the pandemic sort of how key an experience we were missing, staying connected to other people in the workplace. And given that distributed work is very much here to stay, you know, we've, we've got to in, innovate and try new experiences beyond just video. And so that leads us to Microsoft Mesh, which is our platform for building immersive experiences. It's three things, so avatars and teams, uh, which is fun and also a first step to more 3D experiences. And so we announced that avatars and teams will be in, is in private preview. Second is putting that avatar in a 3D space with other people and connecting it to 2D meetings so it's inclusive. You can be in the room, you could be remote, you could be on a headset, you could be on a phone. Everybody can participate and we call that immersive meetings. And that'll show up in teams like click immersive meetings. And then we want people to create completely custom worlds to work and learn. Uh, and so earlier this year, we had a project at, with the World Economic Forum with our partner Accenture that built uh, a experience on a very, very early version of Mesh. And so we're excited that uh, those uh, immersive meetings and custom worlds, well under development, a handful of customers right now, and we're working hard uh, in the next couple months to get them out more broadly. And I'd be remiss to talk about engaging meetings and experiences in the metaverse without talking about us being open as a company. Hopefully those of you who've seen, seen the journey with us, particularly under Satya's leadership, see how important the ecosystem and openness is. And so we did two announcements this week that I think shocked a lot of people. I saw the mind blown emoji a lot on both <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, one was working with Meta on their next generation headset where Satya joined Mark and we're, that's a state of the art device in VR now and we're excited to bring Mesh to it and learn uh, because this will be a long term journey. And the other one, a little more in the here and now, another surprising investment but one customers have told me is pretty exciting is Cisco. Cisco announced not just interoperability with Teams, but they would build native Teams rooms devices, leveraging their deep hardware experience and sort of embracing the, the, the huge momentum and customers have in Teams. And we're excited about working with Cisco and all our partners right. on Teams meeting room devices. So I just, you know, I know the specific features we, we we did one thing, which is bring avatars to private preview, but I wanted to make sure people understood the overall context of making uh, these experiences more engaging 
Yeah, and there's a lot to do to prepare for yeah. this. And also, I want to encourage everyone, when you get an opportunity to test this out for yourself, do it. Because even for me, you think, oh, I work in Microsoft. I'm probably into all this. I wasn't a convert until I was in that World Economic yeah. Forum experience and experiencing it with everyone else. And I got to customize my avatar yeah. to have braids just like mine and wear a, a, a lilac leather jacket that I would wear. Right? And I felt included, and I felt a part of it. And it was different than I thought it would be. And yeah, I was and really I excited. Near term, it's going to be the kind of thing people do all day long. No. But but once in a while, it just yeah. is a level of natural in, in creativity and expression that yes. I think is good to have in the mix. So we're yeah. excited to bring it to market. And I love my avatar when I'm eating lunch and I'm still in a meeting. Yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> everybody that, does that. The hidden secret <laughs> is that your avatar doesn't uh, eat with, uh, talk with their mouth full. That's right? correct. That's meeting. correct. But uh, you know, this connection also leads us to a very favorite topic of yes. mine, you know. Yeah. And I want to really thank you. You have been a huge supporter of the Microsoft community. And we had some announcements about this this week. And your support and Charles Lamana's support um, and all of the community managers inside Microsoft were coming together to do some amazing stuff. But I'd love for you to talk a little bit about the Microsoft community announcements and what we did this week, because you know, I love yeah, that topic. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things that attracted me to Microsoft to begin with was we build products that help people connect with each other. And their community is the best community in tech, and be able to do that uh, is so valuable. People make lifelong friendships, they gain the knowledge they need to do their job, they network, they advance their careers, they learn. And as you know, we had this amazing community with um, SharePoint Saturdays and Microsoft 365 Saturdays. I used to, Saturday morning, my wife would look at me funny when I grabbed the phone <laughs> first thing in the morning and I'd say, oh, there's one in Cologne. Oh, there's one in yep. Brisbane. Oh, there's one in, you know, I'd say, thanks, send some pictures. It was just great to see new people embracing technology and other people. Uh, but the pandemic hit. Yes. And uh, a lot of our ecosystem did some of these events virtually and that was super valuable for Reach, but not the same. So as you well know, like I got probably excited, cranky about this. I said, oh, we got we to gotta catalyze the next era of, com of community because it's needed more than ever because of everything in Azure and Power Apps and Microsoft 365, people need to learn. They need to not just learn from us, but learn from each other and connect. Uh, and so I'm very excited this week. We, after getting a lot of input from the community and a lot of hard work from you and Heather Newman and many others, we launched our new community initiative, including a new community front door, communitydays.org, where you'll be able to see all the community events around the world from Microsoft, whether they're the big events, like I'll be in Europe for the European SharePoint Conference, plug for those guys, uh, or local events. I think the next one's coming up is Microsoft 365 Cincinnati. Uh, there's one for security and so forth. So I'm just, I'm super, I can't tell you. Yeah. Like, I, there was a lot of things I wanted to do during the pandemic, like go out to dinner. Uh, but, you know, one of the ones that really got me most excited is when can I go to a community event and just meet people and see, see Absolutely. Them, our, our technology. Absolutely. Yeah. And everybody can go to that AKA Microsoft community. They can see more about the global initiative. They can go to communitydays.org and find out about events. They can get involved. I mean, I think one of the most important things about this has been that it's all about the broader initiative yeah. that you and Charles are sponsoring and how we're taking people's voices and their feedback feedback and, and pivoting our resources to support in smart ways that they need. Absolutely. It's about them. And so, you know, I, I want to ask you one more, one more quick question, though. If there's one thing that excites you, besides the community, um, from a technology strategy perspective, you know, what, do you, what is that? It's, it's the power of AI to help people create and learn and understand and tr transform work in a way that's less manual. I mean, we see it everything from the integration of Dolly into Designer that we announced this week to something like Syntex, which is more serious business process. <laughs> uh, you know, it's great that you don't need a human being to do all the translation of right. all the documents into all the languages. I mean, you know, and we, uh, we are just scratching the surface about what's going to be possible 
in AI in general, in these large language models in particular. Uh, so you see it in what we introduced in Teams Premium, in Syntex, and Dolly integration in a few different products. You saw it in, in, in Charles Lamont made some announcements. But just wait. Just wait. There's, there's a lot so more. much coming. Yeah. I know. I, so there's so much coming for that. Well, you know, I want to thank you for all of that amazing information. There's so much happening in this space and your support of the community and the work that we're doing there because that's where everybody is also going to get to learn about all these features is they're going to come to the community, they're going to come to those local events, and they're going to build their skills, and it's going to be huge. So we Th Thank you as well. I mean, you and... And the community leaders inside and outside Microsoft are why I'm here. I mean, the technology is fun, but the most important thing is people. And you yeah. embody that as much as anybody I can think of. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. That is awesome. Um, so, so now you embarrassed me. Now I lost my train of thought <laughs> because somebody totally, he just totally embarrassed me on camera. That's awesome. So but what we're going to do, now I remember what we're doing. We are going to go back to the audience and let yeah. them ask you okay. some questions. Um, and I believe the first one is from Pubble in chat, which is lovely. And if you have other questions, make sure to put them in there. Um, but we have one from um, Angel David Carrillo asks, what is your vision around Microsoft Places and connected workplaces? Will end users need new licenses to manage all their workspaces efficiently? Yeah, um, I'm very excited about this. Like a lot of products we do, you know, say take Viva and uh, Syntex as two things we just introduced. We have, we work on technologies, but the thing that really crystallizes this is seeing patterns and customer needs, and you know. As customers were realizing the future of their real estate decisions for, in their space management and engaging employees wherever they were virtually or you know, in their office was going to evolve and be a challenge. This was really top of mind. And so people came to us and said, help us out. What are you doing with your office as Microsoft? You're not going 100% remote, but you're not asking people to really show up three, five days a week if they don't want to. And so how are you managing your space? How are you connecting people? How are you making sure meetings are engaging and effective and so forth? Right. And so we, um, you know, we had been a key foundational piece in Microsoft Teams meetings rooms and the device management and room management around that. But it was really scratching the surface. And so I'm very excited about the announcement we made on Microsoft Places. And, uh, I'm actually not sure off the top of my head if we announced the licensing for it yet. But I'm sure we will at yes, some point we before we, it's for <laughs> available. Uh, but it is, you know, uh, it, you know, like any other offering in this market, we're going to have to make a business case investment for it. It's only going to work if right. people see a clear ROI, a clear so cost savings from it versus uh, you know, manually orchestrating all their spaces. Absolutely. That makes sense. Well, now we've got a question here in the room as yeah. well. Hello, Carolyn, and hello, Jeff. My name is Mark, and we got a question in room, and this is about the Syntex ecosystem. Yeah. With the introduction of e-signature as a part of the Syntex in the future, what is the relationship with other electronic signature offerings from DocuSign and Adobe Acrobat and others? Yeah, what our goal is, to be super clear, is to help customers structure their processes. So anything we can do, um, whether it's bringing AI to content or introducing signatures in the experience is, is to help, uh, help customers transform. So very you know, down to brass tacks in business, we're trying to dramatically grow the market for signatures. Most processes don't have a workflow around them, don't have signatures around them. And so we, uh, we talked to and are working with Adobe, DocuSign, and others about having them plug in uh, so our goal is to catalyze the adoption of their services. Yes, we have a base one in the product. Our team is not gold. Our OKR, if you will, is not the number of people who use our inbox signature experience. Our OKR is to maximize the, the number of people who used all signatures. It's a little bit like when we did, you know, some, you remember, Mark, of course, but when we started introducing migration services, people said, we want to migrate to the cloud. You need a first party tool. Uh, and so we, the platform we use for migration, we exposed to a lot of great partners, ShareGain, AppPoint, many others. And sure enough, the migration business grew for everybody. So that's what we're trying to do, is make it simpler, 
uh, catalyze the market, if you will, and we're really excited to work with Adobe and DocuSign and many others. It's fantastic. I know we're wrapping up here. There's so much more that yeah. we could talk about. I want everyone to go and see your next session, which is going to be wonderful, and you One probably minute. have to <laughs> run to now. So thanks, everyone in the audience, for these questions. Uh, appreciate your willingness to be here in person. Uh, there's so much happening here with Into Focus. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you in the Microsoft community, and I'm going to wrap with that. Thank you so much. Thanks.